Good morning, guys. We're gonna talk about milking supplies today. This is part two of my milking cow series, and today we're gonna cover hen milking versus machine milking, and what equipments I use, and getting your cow to stand still. So, it's cold. It's um, minus 14 Celsius plus six Fahrenheit this morning. So, tucking an extra camera battery in my pocket because this sort of weather loves to kill batteries. So, we hand milk and we used to machine milk. So, I guess you could say we started off hand milking and then we had two milk cows and so we bought a machine milker. But then we discovered that we didn't really like um, machine milking, so we went back to hand milking. And we actually sold one of the cows so that we were only milking one. Um, machine milking versus hand milking, when you only have one cow, hand milking is faster. You're gonna spend just as much time cleaning up as, like there's just so much washing involved in machine milking. If you have two or more cows, that is when you start to save time by machine milking. Um, when you get into machine milking though, because there's so many hoses and such, you're dealing with mechanics, you have to deal with more chemicals for cleaning up, you gotta use bleach, you gotta, all these things that it makes it more complicated and you end up being a mechanic so much. We just didn't enjoy machine milking. If we were to have two milk cows again, I would probably think about a machine because hand milking can be, hand milking one cow is kind of my limit. Two, I couldn't handle right now. So, that's why, and a machine milker, you're gonna look at like a good thousand dollars to buy a machine milker. So they're not cheap. Actually, I think it's a scarf kind of day, guys. Um, so all I need here is I got my bucket. Where'd my soap go? This is a gentle dish soap with, and we add tea tree oil into it. And one rag, two rags, and a clean one for my pocket, a dry one. So then, so the nice thing about hand milking is the equipment is very simple. We're gonna have a bucket of warm soapy water, and we're gonna have, this is a four gallon stainless steel bucket. You can use, well, the four gallons is kind of my max on what I want to carry. If your cow is in the early stages where you're still worried about your bucket getting kicked over, that's when, that's when you bring out a second bucket, you milk into a smaller bucket, and once you've got, once you feel like the cow's getting in, so you dump into the bigger bucket, dump into the bigger bucket. Our cow is actually producing enough right now that I dang near need to bring out a second bucket just because my bucket, by the time there's foam on top, a four gallon bucket but I can only like three and a half gallons is like max so to go milk this is literally all I need so let's go milk the cow another hot topic for milk cows is grain and I already covered that in part one but the other thing is do you feed grain at milking time well sometimes in the training of your cow, you need to give them grain for them to happily stand still at milking. And that's what it is. If you can train your cow to not need milk at milking time, that's a really great thing. And it's really nice to not need it. We found, we found our cow doesn't need grain at milking time, but she will, come in nicer if we give her like a little bit of grain to start off with 
just so she's excited to come in and then um, she doesn't eat grain during milking time. She gets some silage, which I explained in the first video as well. It's still a little dark right now. It's not even sunrise yet here, but the snow makes it brighter. This is our milking setup, and it is quite nice for a family cow setup. This is a stanchion. Oh, I just tripped on a pitchfork. So this is a head locker stanchion. How it works is this, the cow comes through, I put her little scoop of grain there, and then closes on her head and it keeps her in. Keeps her from being able to go forward and back. You don't need this. You could literally not have any of these panels in here. You could just walk the cow in, tie her halter to a post, and that's good. It's all gonna be on what your cow is used to and getting them used to new situations can be hard as well. We have never, well one time we had a heifer and that didn't go well. A heifer is a cow that has never been, had a calf before. So she was a first freshener, it was her first calf and that didn't go out well and we ended up selling her. But I talked in the first video, I know I'm gonna reference the first video but I just, you gotta watch that one too for this to make sense. Starting with a cow that already knows is used to being milked will make your life a lot easier. A lot easier. So with this cow, I haven't brought her in yet. This is called a kick bar. There's a couple, there's one called a cow can't kick and one called a kick bar. A kick bar hits a pressure point on the cow's hip that makes them not want to kick. It's not mean, it's not rude, it's just like, it's a training tool. I use it out of habit, the cow doesn't really kick anymore, but I just continue using it because it's part of our routine. I always close this even though the cow's gonna be on a halter. Sometimes Annabelle is just waiting here to be milked and sometimes she's waiting over by the water and feed troughs. This morning she's waiting over there. Well, you can see the sun just starting to come up over there. Nice red sky. Oh, she dumped over her water trough. That was nice of you, cow. Okay, so Annabelle's dirty this morning and we're gonna get to the cleaning part in the next video here. But I'm gonna show you first how this kick bar works. When you first put this on a cow, they don't like it. It takes some finagling. But she's used to it, she's an old hand. And it hits in a pressure point there. She's dirty so I don't wanna stick my hand in there. But the other thing people often do if they need to work down low on a cow is they push their fist into that pressure point and it just, it doesn't stop them from kicking, but it really slows down their kicking. Oh, the rope is under there. So, if you have had a cow before, or if you had a horse before, you know that you need to be the boss with the horse and you're in charge. And one of those things is that if the cow kicks you, you smack that leg, not bad, just, you know, firm smack, and no, you're in charge, you're the boss. You need to show that you are boss mama cow. If you let them be boss, they'll walk all over you. This cow especially, she needs to know who's in charge, she needs to know who's the boss, and she'll test that. But if she knows you're in charge, she's cool. She just needs to know who's in charge. 